Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to America's Third Party. Yes. I'm David Spahn. I'm for part two of the show. We uh, oftentimes have an overload on our technology. It just happens that this is prosumer equipment. We are using uh, things that, just like everyone else, have limitations. And that's why we sometimes have to shut down and create a second part to our show. Yeah, they, they won't allow a third party in the national elections, Ozzy, because they are afraid that a person will uh, red pill the nation. That's right. And, you know, they try to use the, uh, the alternative conspiracy world to their advantage. Trump has the QAnon group, which seem to think that Trump is stopping the deep state. And the liberals, uh, they, I guess, have Ocasio-Cortez, who thinks that everything is, uh, needs to be green and we should all be forced to get rid of our cars. And now they're discovering what, how many genders, uh, 150 genders that the uh, Democrats have somehow created. Yeah, it was absurd. And now anybody who says that there's just two genders is considered politically incorrect and they call that a hate crime. I know. I just, I, I, I can't keep up with the Democrats. Their, their attempt to con convert our brains to some liberal mush. Watch a student get kicked out of class for suggesting there are only two genders. Told unacceptable opinions can't be voiced in school, even if they're scientifically true. Didn't take up to your opinion. If but I am, then why would you kick me out of class? It's not very inclusive of opinion. Can I take my sentence, please? not very inclusive. No, I'm sorry, what you were saying was not very inclusive. And this is an inclusive school. Yeah, what, how is what I was saying? Because I was saying that the, the only website is that there are more than one gender in well, this country. That's Bible. your opinion. That is my opinion, and that is an opinion which is acceptable in the school. I'm afraid yours, which you're saying that there's no such thing as anyone other than male or female, is not inclusive. Scientifically, there are just two genders. Depending on what I get, I get agenda that. But you're, you are choosing to make an issue of this because I said, "Are you really going to do it?" That was your opportunity to, 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 to keep quiet. You made the issue with it on the website. You said, "Oh, this website doesn't have more than two." Money. You were clearly given an opportunity not to pursue it. You chose to do so. Yeah, because I think it's. You silly. chose to do so. Yes, that's the key question. You chose to do so. I think it's silly to have anything other than two genders. So. That okay? Could anything you please, else? Is could a you please thing. keep that opinion? to your own house. <laughs> You're not allowed to talk about having just two genders. You have to have 150 genders. What are the genders? Are, are some of them plushies? Half man, half plushie? You know, stuffed animal. Teachers need to start being fired. Yeah, well, the whole education system is rot with these imbeciles who literally just step to, to the, the drum of whatever their boss tells them. And unfortunately, uh, educators sometimes fall into the category of those who can do, those who can't teach. <laughs> yes, please stop the hate being committed on your screen by anyone who claims that there's more than, or there's only two genders. Yeah, that's a hate crime now in the eyes of many people. Okay, feminism has been reintroduced in the United States by the elite to demasculate de the male, create hyper-emotional youth distracted by social media, porn, and drugs. So true, Ozymandias 1000, good point. Yeah, you're nailing them, man, great chat. They've literally engineered this uh, at the Tavistock Institute, in case you didn't know. And I'm more than willing to tell you about the Tavistock Institute. 
Many people are unfamiliar with the Tavistock Institute. It's a propaganda machine that develops the media that we that we watch. It was developed right around the post-Nazi era in Germany, in Frankfurt. And now the governor of the Tavistock Foundation was quitting over a damning report into gender identity clinic. They're so hell-bent on converting us into transgenders that uh, they're having an internal problem where they're hiring only transgenders. And it's become a problem. The governor quit. Tavistock has been receiving $7 billion a year uh, on the QT from our government for years. And they get money from MI5 as well. And their primary goal is to manipulate the audiences into, into doing or saying what they think. They control the talking points. And this is where that, that liberal mentality is being born, just so the New World Order can gain control over all of us by weakening the men. And you notice every leader or every movement has no leader. You notice how the Tea Party didn't really have a leader? Yeah, you noticed how, how the Coffee Party didn't really have a leader. There was a Coffee Party, believe it or not, the Democrats had. Even, even the Libertarians struggle with who they want as a leader. You know, you know, you get Alex Jones running around acting like we should all have a revolution, but yet he doesn't want to form a third party or even align himself with a third party. Instead, he endorsed Trump. So he's a shill. So clearly they want us neutered, castrated, and impotent, and they want to keep us here in La La Land out there on the fringes of the internet. Out here in the periphery, we is stoned, immaculate. Jim Morrison. I hated the coffee party. I mean, I had started America's Third Party years before the Tea Party, and we had sense, got censorship up the yin yang. And that's right after that, I decided I was going to start the, uh, the alternate party that would take on any issue, whether it's conspiracy or other. And that's when I did the blackface video. I decided that a third party cannot possibly carry the same themes that the two parties have. That's why our opener talks about the dangers. One of our openers talks about the dangers of GMOs and all the things that are happening with vaccines. And the Democrats won't even touch those ideas. They refuse. It's like they don't even want to discuss it. Here's, here's another opener we use at the end of our show. I'll play it for you right now. This typifies what we're all about.
Thank you. Now I'm going to talk to those people who don't have hearing damage. And uh, oftentimes I, I give a little bit of time for people to listen to my show who read lips because the hearing impaired are the only ones who can actually see or hear what I say. Those of you who don't know how to read lips don't have that ability. So I established a, a plan to help you understand the need for, uh, without going into the specifics of what I said, because that's going to be re reinterpreted later by lip readers. But the, the food aid idea is an idea of getting people in need something that we could supply immediately from a regional food center. We don't have a regional food center in America. We don't even have a grain reserve. And believe it or not, uh, we don't even have the technology to do what I'm telling you we should do right here. Now this would help people who are starving to death in countries like Venezuela because we literally don't even have to fly over their country to drop things into it. Yeah. No, no, it's 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 a lack of of uh, I guess organizational desire. Yeah, and I really believe that, unfortunately, the people that we do attract to our show are cynical apathetics, I call them, many of them. And uh, many people who have taken on that attitude of cynical apathy are merely the out product or the, the byproduct of a very, very screwed up society, which it's, it's like, we know you're out there. We know you exist but you're not going to do anything to stop or change the country you're living in. You're just going to complain about it. So frequently I get people who just want to ask me for cowbell. Well, that's nice, but it, it doesn't appease the, the reality that if we sit and do nothing, nothing will get done. And unfortunately we're stricken by that reality. And most of it was engineered. I don't even blame you for it. Even your, your cynical, apathetic uh, nature is not even your fault. Bear in mind, we're almost all inundated by massive amounts of brainwashing, whether it's the Tavistock Institute programming our brain through media, or it's the mainstream media spitting out its controlled talking points. Either way, we're always led to believe that, that well, I, I'm, I know what I believe. I, I, I support so-and-so, I support whatever. And once you believe that, you're okay, except you really know that somehow you, your choice of left versus right isn't really choice at all, but you don't really want to admit that. I used to think, like many of you do, that if you just trust the two parties, that one of them is going to work, not realizing at the time that they're both bought by the same people. So they have given us the illusion of choice, which makes us think that we're somehow a democracy, which we're not. They've given us the ability to, to watch different choices on TV and over stimulate ourselves with choice. We've got video games, we got porn, you got anything you want, over stimulated everywhere. That's the way they want us. That drains us of our creative energy and turns it, people out like apathetic cynics that we're, we're dealing with. Most of us are apathetically cynical. That's what's going on. Fluoride is a big contributing agent, right? Moving nerd, correct. They've been using fluoride since, uh, gosh, Caesar's time. I understand the Sumerians used fluoride to actually dumb people down. Sumerians had a place where they found uh, that was everyone was completely retarded. And I know some people think that's a hate crime to use the word retarded, but it's not. Yeah, and wait till augmented reality and artificial intelligence and virtual reality. So we're not even able to get on the board to compete in a political show at a national level because they have segregated us so far out to the blogosphere that we only have this group of same people whose IP gets in the show. So misanthropy said, how come they, how come Mark never contacted me to, to, you know, to attack your show? Because misanthropy, you made the mistake of actually watching our show. Had you not watched our show, you probably could have gotten in on some of that cash that they're offering to stop us. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't want to support us, why don't you just join the crowd of people that are hating us and making tons of money if that's what you want? It really doesn't matter to me. 
I'm not God. I'm not going to determine your fate once you, you know, are held up accountable for your sins against a good person like myself. I'm not the person who's going to pass judgment on you. And, you know, frankly, if you're an atheist, you don't believe in that anyway. So there's nothing to worry about. But, yeah, I'm sure if you reached out to Mark, he'd probably, you know, be more than uh, interested in helping you. But then he'd be suspicious that maybe you're a mole working for me. Just telling you, hey, thank you. Love from Albania. But if you really want to, you know, side with the devil, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, I believe in free choice and free will. I believe we all have that. They, they, we're all moving in that direction, whether we like it or not. Mark's been paying people lots of money. I and mean, I got people coming in here over at, uh, at uh, yeah, Twitch. And they said tonight, we had them on screen. On the, in the part one, you saw a person say they get paid from Mark to do this, to attack our show. fact that I'm streaming on Twitch dude I started streaming on Twitch seven years ago I was banned uh, a year after I started streaming I, I have over 9,500 views the first year and uh, they banned me so I was banned for five years by capital gain at Twitch I, I was gonna do this for six years we were gonna have the show for six years it was only until recently when they removed the toss regulation against homophobia that they claimed I'd, I'd been a, somehow a homophobe, even though I'm not, when somebody said, are you gay? And I said, no, and I consider that sexual harassment for you asking me that. And they said, oh, you're a homophobe. And then a couple people reported me, and then that was a, it was a tossable offense pri prior to the Steve Crowder issue on YouTube that just popped up. So we go where we can. And we were IP banned for five years over there. And I've been for se seven years subscriber locked and follower locked at YouTube and Twitter. We're locked down. We have the same number of subscribers and followers we've had for eight or nine years. Whereas Young Turks, they got two million subscribers on YouTube. We got zero. So it's beyond belief the level of censorship that's happening in this country against the good, righteous, honest people in this country trying to do the right thing. The powers that be are scared shitless that this might just gain in virality by 2020. And, you know, frankly, I, I would say it's up to you, but I don't even expect that of you because, honestly, most of you are being brainwashed and dumbed down by your food that you're eating. Many of you don't even know to avoid any tap water in your drinks. So you're, you're fluoridated. So they're, And then they're dumping pollution on your heads left and right massive amounts of air pollution in the form of chemtrails and none of us are able to even think practically yeah so ron paul gave up a great opportunity he could have been the uh, the third party candidate in 2012 when americans elect offered uh, whoever won that contest to get on the ballot in 32 states Ron Paul passed up a, the best opportunity of his life. Sarah and I were right there when it happened. He shunned a group called Americans Elect, which was trying to show people how easy it was to, for money to get people on the ballot. They spent $40 million on that program, and most of it came out of the uh, somebody's betting another person that they couldn't do it, and they did it. Ron Paul missed an opportunity of a lifetime. He passed up a chance to be like Ross Perot. It would have been fantastic. But I agree with Ron Paul about about Iran, that we don't see, I don't see them as a direct enemy like Trump does. And I agree with Ron Paul on the uh, issue of the Federal Reserve and how we need to end the Fed. And I believe we, we could do that. I believe we could create a parallel infrastructure bank and no, I'll, victory for cakes is David, are you on the ballot? No, I'll never be on the ballot because I'm telling you, people don't have the ability to even get out of bed and think about doing something other than I've got to go to work and buy milk and potatoes and, and, and bread for everyone. They got everybody on a treadmill, so nobody has any extra time. And we don't have those uh, crazed zealot Democrats, commie Democrats who will go out and get signatures for anybody, anytime, any place. Americans elect paid those people. They got at least a dollar. I think they got $2 a signature to get people on the ballot. So that was a, a, a flat out money can buy anything in America proof. 
And that was the sad reality that we had to face. The reality is most people don't even have the wherewithal to you know get up and even think, let alone watch a chat show and, and talk about politics. So you guys are the unusual. No, I don't know about the Young Americans for Liberty, but I can tell you there are a lot of splinter groups, even the Lebanon Party, that's been out there for a while. We've got a long... No, I don't want to... I don't want money. That's my point. I'm not looking for a claim on a castle. What you're dealing with with me is a person who's totally non-materialistic. I mean, I could walk out of this house right now with nothing and, and still comfortably live on very little. I could, I could literally live out of dumpsters if I had to, because I'm not, I don't care about pursuing money as a primary goal in life. Most people who are living in America do. They believe that money is the only thing that matters. In their life. So I'm the opposite of Donald Trump. No, I'm not a communist because I don't believe that communism is uh, uncorruptible. I believe that anybody who's greedy could take over a communist party. And look at Vladimir Putin, case in point. Whoever that person is, if it indeed is Vladimir Putin, because I'm beginning to wonder, that person's pretty greedy. I understand he has over $80 billion. They buy him off. He's just a, a front man for their organization. The, the Russian oligarchs are connected to very powerful global Zionists who are working for the New World Order. Russia got taken over completely by a large group of very wealthy mobsters when the Soviet Union broke up. Now they're using that technique to control us from within by manipulating our weakest points, the Republicans who like money, and they also like guns. So they sent in Maria Butina, who is actually a, she's actually a war criminal. In, in Russia. Her mother and she were in, in a gulag for about 15 years and they were manipulated. But Maria Butina was never an agent for Russia's plan. They just put her out there as a, a, a feeler, see what she could do, seriously. And they got a hold of the NRA and they managed to lube up their pockets. And the NRA has not bothered to even make a public statement about the money they got from Russia. Instead, you know what the, the NRA is doing now? They're, they're thinking of declaring bankruptcy and closing their doors. The NRA is thinking of actually going under. They know there's a liability with this Russian money and they don't want to get into it. They're going to be like IT&T, the company that closed their doors when the government started looking into these weird scholarship funds. Yeah. So we may be looking at a, a situation where the NRA shuts down and doesn't even want to answer to the questions about Russian money. It is not some coincidence that Donald Trump got a $30 million donation from the NRA and Maria Butina was soliciting funds from the Russian people or the Russian oligarchs. So they bought the Republicans and they still control the Republicans. Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham both receive uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for reelection from the Russian super PACs who are allowed to give our government money now. It's all bought off. They're using every means possible. The New World Order is trying to buy off every politician in America to rig this upcoming election. And I'm their biggest enemy. I support term limits in Congress. Yep. Uh, two terms for senators and four terms for congressmen and women. Congress people. Hey, this has been great. We're going to. Uh, uh, do a little, little extra time tonight just because I enjoyed talking and you know we are going to be doing a, a vacation show from six to nine we're going to shooting for six to eight actually but we may extend to six to nine if we have a good connection the uh, the show will be uh, this summer we'll be doing every night except Sunday uh, but I may do a modified schedule if it's too difficult we may may we have traveled before but it was a long time ago seven years ago so we uh, we did every other night during the modified schedule. But I'm gonna to try to shoot for every night to start with. We're gonna be getting a system that can that can uh, transmit uh, from any location. So we have to actually, wherever we are, we have to actually get the proprietary system in that area. So it's we're kind of waiting to find out exactly what we're gonna do. But we will be going through a VPN. So no one will know where we are because we've been doxxed, we've been attacked. It's been crazy. Uh, starting this coming up week, we're going to take a nice long trip. 
Well, I think organic farming is a big part of what I've always been about. I mean, I, I promoted organic foods to Safeway markets and got got kid, kind of the kick the whole thing off with the O brand. I was never more impressed by a, a meeting with the, the general manager of Safeway markets as I was that day. A long time ago in 1985. Rogan is a shill. Yeah, Rogan is a shill. Unfortunately, Joe Rogan works for uh, Laughing Cow Productions. And these people think it's funny to, to lie, cheat, and steal. Alex Jones is part of the Laughing Cow Productions, or excuse me, Sacred Cow Productions. Kevin Booth, the originator with uh, Bill Hicks, were uh, on staff. And Bill Hicks now has, uh, has acquired the identity of Alex Jones. Bill Hicks never died. He just became Alex Jones. While Bill Hicks spent a lot of time practicing and imitating the person of Alex Jones, certain genetic features were missed during the plastic surgery. I mean, I look more like the real Alex Jones. When you line these two guys up, you can tell that there, there's something completely... Uh, yeah, there's something not right about the two pictures of these two guys. This was Alex Jones in 1997. The real Alex Jones. This is Bill, was Bill Hicks, and he, uh, he faked his death, claimed to die of pancreatic cancer, and then emerged as Alex Jones that same year, and this guy disappeared. Now, I was doing radio that same year here in Washington that uh, the real Alex Jones was working down in Austin, Texas. People from Austin say, hey, you know that the guy currently that does Alex Jones is not the real guy, right? Yeah. We get people through and chat sometimes from Austin and say, yeah, he's totally fake. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. This guy works for uh, the military. He's a military industrial complex guy. He uh, Lockheed Martin was the group that originally uh, ordered the domain for Prison Planet and Infowars. Alex Jones at the time uh, didn't have those domains. He just had a radio station exposing the new world order. And then all of a sudden they acquired those domains. That's when this guy disappeared. He came. He left completely. He was he's he was a uh, five foot nine by the way. I'm six foot four, so I'm, I'm not him, although I do look a lot like him. Uh, he, yeah, he's he was five foot nine. This guy is six feet, six feet one. Bill Hicks was originally six foot one. So all we have to really do is measure Bill Hicks. And uh, we'll, if, assuming he's not standing down like this, we'll get him down at, at six feet and we'll prove to you that Alex Jones is just a performance actor now. Lockheed Martin... Skunkworks Productions originally started the entire InfoWars plan. It's part of the psyops that they're playing. In fact, Lockheed Martin got the money from Tavistock to do that. It's hard to piece this together, I know. Uh, and if you're a person who's been traveling uh, the internet looking for uh, conspiracy theories and finding out all this stuff from Alex Jones saying, wow, he really opened my mind. They, they release certain things like psyops, MKUltra, Mon the Monarch, Operation Monarch, they tell you these things through Alex Jones. They want you to be informed, but then they slip in other things to control you and sway you toward a certain way of thinking. When Alex Jones t talked about Michelle Obama being a transgender, he had not been consulted with his uh, handlers and the story broke faster than he could control it. And then he was seen later trying to re-step away out of, the, out of saying that Michelle Obama was a transgender. Clearly, uh, Michelle Obama is a transgender. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I even showed a picture in part one tonight of uh, Michelle Obama's, uh, you know, thing flapping around. They did. They do everything they can to uh, to correct any problems. Michelle Obama was never supposed to be outed by Alex Jones, so he he restated his his position on this. For broadcasting his discovery, he even went as far as presenting a special report about Michelle Obama's true gender. Well, you never know what to expect on the Alex Jones Show. And this morning, the topic came up that Michelle Obama might be a man. 
I know that might sound ridiculous, but is it? Uh, after all, there are many questions surrounding the president's past, and now people are starting to question the sexual orientation of the first lady. Alex Jones has a special report on that from our new television studio in Austin, Texas. But first, here's what Joan Rivers had to say to kick the controversy into the mainstream. You know Michelle is a trans... I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. Well, Joan Rivers talked about it in the last few days, and it's a big international news story. The question is, who is... Michelle Obama. Is she really a woman? Is she a man? Every time I look at Michelle or Michael Obama, uh, the first lady or the first tranny, every time I look at them, something doesn't look right. She doesn't look like any black woman or any woman I've ever known. She's got shoulders that are wider than a man's, which physiologically doesn't happen. Again, you can put three... And then, and then he rewalked the whole thing and, and backed out of the whole statement and completely said, no, I, I made a mistake. Like Joan Rivers. Some people are going to say that Joan Rivers was killed because she joked around a month ago saying that Obama was gay and that uh, Michelle Obama was a tranny. You know Michelle is a tranny. I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Uh, we joked around about that as well. The mainstream media uh, picked it up as if we were being serious. Uh, but I don't think she was killed by the Obama administration by doing that. As you can clearly see, Bill Hicks was not joking. He was very serious. But things got very serious for him when he was contacted by his CIA handlers and ordered to completely recant his previous statements. And this is controlled opposition. Right. Here you go, America. You are free to do as we tell you. You are free to do as we tell you. That was Bill Hicks, too. Yeah. So many of you who grew up with the Alex Jones, bear in mind, uh, he ran, st when I was doing shows, uh, when I brought up Abbottabad and said it was completely fake, I went online and saw him grab his, he grabbed his uh, cell phone and did a show from his SUV that night with my same talking points, following everything I had said. Reaching out to his large audience, he told the same story I did, that Abbottabad was fake. And I still believe Abbottabad was fake. I can prove it to you. The entire chopper incident was, uh, they had to destroy a chopper. $1.5 billion stealth chopper because they, they landed on a fence which they themselves had had under surveillance for what they said, five years. Why would they land a stealth chopper on a fence that they had under surveillance for five years? It was all makeshift put together to cover up the long form birth certificate issue that I was talking about for four years prior that Donald Trump grabbed just to get noticed. In 2012, he talked about it and then Obama had to talk about bringing a long form birth certificate out. And then the Abbottabad story came and said, he's, he's a CIA agent who, literally watches our show and grabs talking points from our show and he did it during that time period especially and he's designed to as controlled opposition to steer you into a dead end where you're seen by your whole family as a whack job many of you people who bought into the uh, hollow hoax conspiracy are, are of no value in stopping Zionists because your family looks at you as like a complete joke if you deny the Holocaust the Holocaust happened. It was actually a plan to create the state of Israel to kill those people. And I talked about it in our show earlier with Netanyahu. But this has been a plan to control our minds for years and years. And they've been paying these people a lot of money. Now they're paying people to attack our show. Now they'll do anything to keep this, this operation from growing. And it's up to you people if you wanna tell people about us and about awakening people to the, the reality of chemtrails, of 9-11 being a, a, a possible inside job. A lot of these things really are important because we'll never stop these people who are controlling our country and our world unless we can expose them. And the only way we're gonna expose them is not through the mainstream media because remember they, they control that talking point we have to expose them word of mouth, one by one. People have to awaken. 
I'm convincing a lot of people, even personally, uh, that we are clearly being sprayed like insects every day. I didn't grow up in a world where I wanted to be sprayed with chemicals that nobody even knows what they're doing. I, I didn't want to grow up in a world where, where we don't even know what, what is in the air above us. You know, I didn't ask for this. Consequently, I don't want children. I don't want kids to have to, you know, endure what I do. But you guys love your children, and I think you're great parents. Seriously. Just keep loving your children and, and realize that you're the ones carrying the torch. I'm not going to have children right now in my life because I just don't really like the world I live in. I, I am very, very dissatisfied with what's going on. That's why I'm running for president all the time, because I really would like to change it. I'd like to offer a job plan for people. And this is a very quick, simple one. We'll give you that description. We need solar energy on our rooftops. We need huge savings on our electric bill. Win-win for both you and uh, the government because the government could make money back from your electricity for years to come. We can actually make money off your rooftop for 40 years. And you'll, you'll save money on the electricity too. We'll give you a solar rooftop for free. We'll pay the installers and that'll be a new business startup in your area, local guys getting trained. We'll even train them, men and women, to install these solar panels. And we will be able to save enough energy in the first five years to pay for the solar panel. And then the next five years to pay for the installation. That's 10 years out of a 40 year solar panel. That means for 30 years, the American government is gonna make some money on your, your rooftop. Say we lease your rooftop for 40 years you will have saved money on your electric bill the whole time, but it just, just won't be 40% savings. It'll be more like 20% savings. So it's a win-win for everybody, except of course the electric companies that wants to you know, make more money on, on oil-based electricity. This is just one of the many ideas. The geothermal pockets. Oh, the flat earth is another sidetrack, yeah. The flat earth is a sidetrack developed by the CIA they use the old theory of the flat earth theory and they promote it all over the internet with multiple websites. Allied Signal Corps makes a lot of these websites that have talk about the flat earth with the moon hoax. Well, the moon hoax has legitimate reasons to believe that people shouldn't believe that, that we land on the moon because frankly, we never went back. We never mined the moon. Even the, fi the video itself taken on the moon was destroyed by NASA, they said. They had to recoup it from ABC, CBS, and NBC. And uh, long story short, we've been essentially lied to by NASA. Never a straight answer. You saw the Backstreet Boys a few nights ago. They spent the entire to concert talking about how many ideas have been stolen from you. Are you serious? That's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, but I know word of mouth will get out to some of the people who are actually waking up. I'm really happy about that. Thank you for telling me, if indeed it's true. But yeah, there's a, a, a strong, uh, there's a, a definitely strong need for, uh, oh, thank you, for some clarity here in leadership. And we haven't had clarity in leadership for some time. We've got a guy who drones on about the same things over and over again in front of the same audience of people that like to get discounts on Trump merchandise. That's how he lures them to those those 120,000 people who were lured to that event. He gives them bonuses on his and discounts on his uh, his merchandise. It's unbelievable. He's literally bribing people to go to these events where he stages these Soviet-style uh, speaking engagements where he talks to his audience of, Oh, we love you, Donald. We love you. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> you know, they have no brains whatsoever, these people. But anyway... Trump will try to co-op uh, the idea. They create all kinds of ways of steering us away from the truth. If we didn't land on the moon, they want us to think that the earth is flat. Thereby, in the eyes of everybody in your family, you're an idiot. Yeah, and uh, frankly, of course, the earth is round. Every other celestial body in the known universe you can see with a telescope with your own eyes is spherical in nature, except for a, a couple slivers and asteroids. So. They'll do that with that. They'll also steer people away from any theories of chemtrails. 
You know that Flat Earth gets five times more hits than the word chemtrail online? Five times more hits for the word Flat Earth than chemtrails. It's funny. So they, they what they do is they put they put chemtrails on websites with reptilians and, and stupid faces so that we think chemtrails mean you're a whack job. You must po you can't possibly be serious because you believe in reptilians too. So of course we're not being sprayed because that's wacky. Yeah. Meanwhile, they've been spraying us since 1946. I mean, this is a film stock archive. Every day is a new spray. Our area has nothing but sprays all day long, every day. You wouldn't believe what the Northwest is. We, we they start the sprays in the West and it drifts all the way east from there. Yeah, Willie, I'm doing a little late show because I had a, a down, down to a computer. So I'm just giving you a little extra. What we're breathing in France, in areas all around the world, in Germany, in the US, we're breathing nanoparticles, heavy metals, and it's toxic to our brain. These people that are doing it, they don't give a, a crap about our brain or any toxicity. They're just doing it because they somehow think they're in charge of the weather and they're playing God. Meanwhile, they're not coming up with uh, programs like this. The Democrats don't have anything near this. The Republicans don't have anything near this. This will actually be able to be implemented without congressional support. I'd love to get congressional support, but I can do this with the money that's currently in the home fund. Four billion dollars to start with. We can start this process of buying houses and build up from there. This program, I'm going to expand a program with the Army Corps of Engineers that currently is in existence, and we're going to mass produce these things. These solar rooftops that you can roll out on your rooftop. And that's, that's going to be a revolution in and of itself because this country needs exactly that. I don't need congressional approval to do any of this. You understand these ideas are, are manufactured out of the government's uh, the the, US, the executive branch control over the military and over the existing funds that are currently allocating funds to certain things. Yeah, the hum Homestead Renewal Plan is dovetails perfectly with the home program. So we'll be able to do that rather quickly. And once it starts, we can start flipping houses for the U.S. government and turn that money around and make uh, enough people enough money to get a living wage, 15 bucks an hour to start and then go from there making uh, making new houses. Fixing up old houses, I should say, because more of this is renovation than anything. We've got other great ideas, technologically speaking, that uh, are also pretty cutting edge. Like the Blimpenberg. And we have a blimp plane idea that Trump is trying to steal. Uh, he actually talks about it. But uh, this is the Blimpenberg. It's just a, a joke somebody made. I was, I'm pushing an idea of strapping on a balloon to most of the old airliners that are out there. Yeah. Anyway, here's the solar carpet that the Army Corps of Engineers makes every single year. And there's no reason why they can't mass produce this for public use. This is a company that's working with the Army Corps of Engineers. We just ramp up this production and we start delivering these to neighborhoods and get you guys trained in local community colleges to start installing them. And voila, we've got the program up and running. It's gonna be a, a, a big startup, which will uh, offer a great deal of, of support for uh, startup businesses. Five employees could do solar panel installation and make 20 bucks an hour each of you. Okay, here's a wrap with Bill Hicks. Okay, we got a couple of Bill Hicks coming up, and then we'll go from there. This will conclude my show, though. Thank you for coming in and watching. Appreciate the extra time. I, I've always uh, enjoyed doing the show, so being I don't make any money doing this, I get intrinsic enjoyment, and I'm dri driven by the principle that a third party in the center of the political spectrum will save our nation. Great to meet you, Shobadan. Thank you for, for coming in. We'll be back every night at Cool Rock Party as long as they'll have us at uh, Twitch. Yeah, banned, banned for five years and we're back. Just in time, I think, too. 
Okay, see you guys tomorrow. We'll be doing Freedom Friday and talking about police brutality, uh, the growing immigration problem with concentration camps being born uh, right under our nose, just like Hitler had down at the south of the border. And in this, in this sense, I agree with Ocasio on this. Many people are saying that the deplorable conditions that Trump is mismanaging is beyond belief, horrifying. We'll talk about that tonight. Take care. I'm Mr. Wright. See you later. Of my feet, my heart stops to be